and welcome to another exciting edition of The Property Show. Today, we've lined up a great show with a sneak peek into real estate investment opportunities available in the market from affordable apartments, site and service land schemes with contemporary architectural designs and a team of professionals to jumpstart your journey to luxury living with stable and attractive returns. On this show, you're spoiled for choice. The accessory sport conversation is on art with a unique look on how to match today's art into our interior decor. It's also very important to look at color because I believe that as an artist, color affects us in different ways. The home ownership segment is on a tail of investing in this sector with prospects of getting attractive returns. Mac, in my opinion, is more for the person wanting to get the best out of his returns. Our location today is Red Rose Gardens. Later on, I'll be exploring this beautiful, comfortable project, a functional family home which ticks all the boxes on product and price. But first, let's explore other investment options currently available in the market. Thank you for your feedback. Let's keep interacting on our social media handles. Let's get started. As always, there is something for everyone. We kick off in Ongatarongai, a fast-growing town. In this thriving community, we find King's Serenity, a residential project of two-bedroom apartments. This development comes with all essential amenities, including green spaces, play area, as well as top-notch security. At 3.2 million shillings, King Serenity could be your home address. Let's check it out. King Serenity is conveniently located within Ongaturongai town, 500 meters from the highway and 800 meters from Masai Mall. Nearby institutions include Nairobi Institute of Business Studies and Multimedia University. Commercial centers in close proximity include Karen Galleria and Masai Center with banks and other social amenities ideal for modern families. The project has ease of access to Nairobi City and other towns with major public routes to Nairobi and Kajiado. King Serenity offers space, warmth and comfort you deserve when buying your first home. This affordable residential complex consists of two-bedroom apartments with a plinth area of 1,000 square feet built-up space. The amenities include cross-ventilated apartments and a well-planned layout and compact design, spacious lounge come dining area, a separate toilet with a shower. Other features include green spaces and attractive landscaping, kids' play area, solar street lighting, secured masonry boundary wall, controlled access for tight security, well-planned security checkpoints, borehole with overhead storage tank, cabra paving blocks to driveways, ample parking space for residents as well as guests, and a community hall for residents, entertainment and meetings. Next, a site and service land scheme located in Ongata Rongai. Savannah Park, a plot that come with water, electricity, all weather road infrastructure, 
4G internet connectivity plus contemporary architectural designs and a team of professionals to jumpstart the journey. I must say, this is an ideal location for those looking to build that dream home and will be happy to arrange private viewing. Here is more. Savannah Park Rongai is located in the outskirts of Ongata Rongai town, which is one of the satellite towns 10 kilometers northwest of Nairobi city. The property is near the road linking Ongata Rongai, Nazarene University and the new SGR station. The road from the SGR to Savannah Park is graded to Maram standard and is just a five minute drive to the entrance gate. Savannah Park Rongai has 200 plots located one kilometer from the new Rongai Kisarian SGR railway station and three kilometers from Nazarene University. The plots are suitable for residential homes due to the close proximity to the famous Rimpa Conservancy. They also offer a beautiful view of Gong Hills. The plots are fully serviced with piped water, a borehole and electricity on site. Each individual plot is fenced after payment is complete. Savannah Park Rongai also has 4G coverage. The developer of Savannah Park had planted eucalyptus trees which have now matured. The site and service land scheme also has a plan of three and four bedroom missionettes with a team of professionals to help jumpstart your home ownership journey. This comes at a separate fee. From Mongata Rongai, we head off to Mombasa Road, Shaba Village, a project of two and three bedroom apartments with all amenities convenient for modern family living. Here is a look at what the project has to offer. Shaba village is located off Mombasa Road, approximately 15 kilometers away from Nairobi town. The property is less than four minutes from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Shaba village is within easy reach of a number of shopping centers. Accommodation includes spacious lounge, open plan kitchen, and doby area, large windows, mahogany doors, wrought iron cotton rods, gypsum ceiling with cornices, high ceilings, master bedroom ensuite, two cozy bedrooms with a shared washroom, and visitor's cloakroom. Moving on, Fairfield Gardens, luxurious four-bedroom maisonettes with open-plan concepts creating easy transition to the entire house. One of the things that stand out for me at Fairfield Gardens, it's well laid out with large windows which bring in lots of natural light as well as beautiful gardens. Let's hear more. Fairfield Gardens consists of 70 high-quality townhouses. The estate is set on five acres and each of the four-bedroom unit has a built-up area of 190 square meters, all with a DSQ. The project is located in Siokimau, 13 kilometers from Nairobi CBD. Accommodation features include an entrance hallway providing privacy to living spaces and a transition into the house. Spacious living and dining areas with an open plan concept allowing for ease of access to the rest of the house. The large windows and glass doors leading to the garden allows lots of natural light in the living area. A fully assembled kitchen with an island counter and kitchen hood 
There is lots of storage space in the top and bottom drawers, as well as a kitchen store for additional storage. Utility area with adobe sink and washing machine provision. An ensuite guest room at the lower level for privacy of the guests. A solid mahogany balustrade staircase leading to the upper level of the house. A spacious master ensuite bedroom with a walk-in closet, as well as a grand bathroom with a shower cubicle, bathtub, his and her sinks, plus more storage spaces. Spacious third and fourth bedrooms sharing a bathroom with fitted wardrobes. Other features in the development include perimeter wall with electric fencing and 24-hour manned gate for security, a borehole and municipal water supply with an additional 2,000-litre attic domestic water storage, solar water heating systems with an electric controller, two parking slots per house, street lighting and generator for communal areas, a clubhouse that will include a swimming pool, gymnasium, daycare and playground, community shop and a management office. Completion and handover of the project is anticipated to be in the fourth quarter of 2019. Our next stop is at Karen, a suburb with good supply of schools, shopping malls, and most importantly, ease of access. In this affluent neighborhood, we look at the paddocks, a gated community of 10 rustic homes. The construction of this project is complete and the title deeds are ready too. You can move in tomorrow. Let's get more details. The Paddocks Karen is conveniently located on 3D Lane, 16 kilometers southwest of Nairobi city center with first class facilities offering a superior lifestyle. The accommodations include on the ground floor, one guest bedroom en suite, spacious lounge, fitted kitchen breakfast area, study room, large terrace with open fireplace leading to the gardens and two detached servants quarters. On the first floor, one master ensuite bedroom, three bedrooms and a family room with a fireplace, and large open terrace with railing overlooking gardens. The salient features include swimming pool, electric perimeter fence and CCTV surveillance, clubhouse, 24-hour man security gate, intercom system, two car port, beautiful landscape gardens, borehole water supply, backup generator, Cabra paved internal roads and street lighting, unique common sewerage recycling plant and irrigation system, and solar panels. Our final investment option is our shoot location, Red Rose Gardens. The wooden floors, spacious and open plan concept, plus this modern kitchen with granite countertops and cabinets for storage are a win for me. I must say, this modern three-bedroom apartment complex just a few meters from the main road has beautiful, detailed finishes. Here is more. Red Rose Gardens, a modern apartment complex located in Thidigwa along Kiambu Road, adjacent to Quick Mart Supermarket, 100 metres from the main road. The development consists of 43 three-bedroom apartments plus a DSQ with a plinth area of 154 square metres. Accommodation features include a spacious living room area with wide sliding windows that leads to the balcony area, large windows letting in natural light, separate dining area, a common cloakroom for the guests, modern kitchen with granite countertops, 
top and bottom cabinets for storage in the kitchen, wood floors and tile finishing making the interior aesthetics more appealing, spacious bedrooms with closets for storage. Other amenities shall include installed solar panels for water heating, in-house gym plus a social hall, perimeter wall with electric fencing and CCTV cameras for security, connection to the Nairobi Water Mains water supply, an underground 60,000 litres water reservoir tank plus extra 1,000 litre water tanks for each unit. A total of 90 parking spots providing two per unit and extra ones for guests. Power backup generator for the common areas. This project is expected to be completed by December 2019. For investors looking for stable and attractive returns, we've got you covered. At First Avenue, we have a portfolio of properties for every budget and we'll be happy to guide you every step of the way. accessory spots. The new trend of accessorizing our interior with art is catching up. Earlier this week, we caught up with a creative artist at an art gallery who shared tips on how to pick art for the right wall. Let's hear more. The indigenous Mashariki is a show that brings together East Africa's finest artists. It's a pop-up show. We're putting it up in places like malls, uh, sometimes restaurants. So the idea is to get to reach uh, uh, closer to the community and closer to the people and for, for people to get to appreciate more art as uh, compared to before where uh, people thought you have to reach, go uh, into a gallery or go to, into a museum to find some of this art. First of all, art is a way of life. Uh, whatever we see around, whatever we touch, it's, it's all art. Uh, but most importantly, when it comes to, to, to real estate and interior deco, uh, it's very important to put into consideration uh, art in terms of color, uh, the size of artwork, the size of the, of the room that the artwork is going to sit. Take, for example, uh, a place like a living room. Uh, depending on the size of the living room, that also determines the size of the art or, or, or the art piece. If the, the, the room is, is quite small and narrow, I think uh, one would opt to go for a much uh, smaller uh, artwork in terms of size. And uh, if the room is, is big and broad, uh, one would opt for um, a, a larger space so that um, the artwork can sit comfortably. But also, most importantly, it's also very important to look at color. Because I believe that as an artist, color affects us in different ways. There are clients who have bought my work and they have told me that uh, they feel happier when they look at a blue painting. And some tell me they feel stronger when they look at um, a red painting. So uh, I think color plays a very important role and, uh, it's, and one should look out uh, uh, very much in terms of color. But also, um, when it comes to interior deco, for a family that has children, I think subject matter is also one of the very important aspects that one should look into. Uh, you wouldn't want to put a, a very nude painting in a living room where there are children running around and, and they would be asking so many questions. So I think as an as a art lover, as an art collector, or for someone who loves art, you should consider some of those factors when you're selecting art for your, for your, for your living room and for your living space. Well, uh, the visual arts uh, industry has, is, is growing now as compared to the previous years and people are beginning to appreciate art. Uh, uh, so far um, I've, I've, I've had a lot of uh, collect, local collectors actually collecting my art and uh, I feel very happy that now people are beginning to appreciate art. Initially people thought art was just about uh, drawing with pen and pencil, making pencil sketches, but now uh, people are beginning to realize that art is actually more than that. People are beginning to realize that art is more industrial. Take for example um, 
most of the advertising agencies, the billboards you see around town, the TV commercials you see playing on the TV, most of those are being done by artists. You go to the industrial uh, department, most of the shoes, the fashion design industry, uh, the bottle labels, all those are done by artists now. So uh, people are beginning to embrace art and I would really love to encourage uh, parents out there to not to sit uh, on their kids, to encourage them to develop their talent in art, to, to, to encourage them to pursue art up to the university level because it's, it's art has, has evolved. It's no longer being looked at as just a pencil sketch and, and there. It has grown. I'm happy now that uh, so many galleries are coming up in, within around East Africa and Africa at large. Um, I, for one, am affiliated to Banana Hill Art Gallery and uh, I'm also affiliated to another gallery in Uganda which is called Wumoja Art Gallery. So for any of the East African collectors and, and people who want to access our art, they can visit uh, Banana Hill, Wumoja Art Gallery. That's where you'll find most of our collections. Right now, I'll just walk you through some of the artworks that uh, you can show in your different uh, art spaces, living room, um, let's say office reception, office setting, maybe a kitchen setting. Um, uh, take for example an artwork like this one. This is an artwork by an uh, artist called Edison Mugalu. Uh, look at the bright colors, look at the impressionist style. Uh, this artwork is, is, would be suitable for a large, uh, let's say, living room because it's, it's more of impressionistic uh, style and it, it requires you to look at it from uh, a distance for you to get the exact picture. So this would uh, be very suitable for uh, a living room. Uh, the next one here would also be very nice for a living room. It's an artwork by uh, I myself, Ronnie Ogwang. Uh, look at the bright colors uh, in terms of sub subject matter. The artwork needs to stir up conversation. Uh, people need to ask why, what was the intention of the artwork, what was the artist intending to do. So subject matter comes into play. Take for example this artwork. The bright background. Have it in a kitchen and you enter there and you just pick up the appetite. Or you have something like this in a restaurant with uh, very bright welcoming colors. You enter and the first thing you do, you think about food and you, you pick up the appetite. So. This would be very ideal for a bar area, a restaurant area, a kitchen area, or even a dining hall uh, sort of uh, uh, area. And then uh, a very big artwork like this. As you can see, it's, it's a monochrome. The artist intended to use uh, uh, just tints and shades of, of browns. He's just playing about his browns. Uh, this is very warm and uh, it would work very well in a let's say, a very big living room area or a very big uh, office reception or, or a boardroom and uh, depending on, on the size of the room, this, is, this would be the ideal uh, space for such, such a setting. The Accessories Pot is where we get new ideas on how to infuse a breath of fresh air in our spaces. Join us next week for a holistic interior solution with Cherry Interiors. Still ahead, Property news with a highlight of events happening in the sector. We've been, you know, killing the myth that uh, going green is expensive or it costs more. Uh, you'll see a lot of developers now selling themselves as green developers. The homeownership segment with a tale of investing with prospects of getting stable, attractive returns. Time to come, this would be the most happening place to be in and would get you the best rental returns. 
plus much, much more. We'll be right back after the break. Keep it property show. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. It's time for a highlight of events happening in the sector. Earlier this week, the Kenya Green Building Society, Kenya Property Developers Association and Women in Real Estate signed a Memorandum of Understanding to transform the construction industry to be greener and sustainable environmentally, both economically and socially. This collaboration hopes to provide a drive towards green building policies in the country. This will see more climate-friendly developments that save on operation costs and health benefits that green buildings bring. We're very excited uh, that we finally signed this memor memorandum of understanding with uh, Kenya Green Building Society. Uh, why are women in real estate professional women in the built environment uh, and these are basically all uh, sectors of, and professions in the built environment, um, architects, QSs, interior designers, construction managers, name it. Um, we basically are there to champion and give a voice to women in the built environment and we're very excited about the achievements that we've made since inception in 2016 and this collaboration obviously is a great milestone because going green is obviously um, a big part of sustainability in terms of uh, just conserving environments, conserving the way we live and obviously women are the champions when it comes to this sector. In fact women champion a lot of things um, that surround the built environment. Uh, we are the ones who influence where we live, we are the ones who influence how um, a space should look, we are the ones who influence um, the men into doing certain things a certain way because we are the ones who utilize the built environment uh, more than our male folk. So there's no better time and I'm re really excited that we've uh, uh, gotten into this. The Kenya Property Developers Association is a business membership organization that represents the interests of property developers and other sector players in the industry. Um, we've been in existence since 2006 and we currently have a membership of 145 members. These members are primarily company members and basically what we do for them is that we speak to government on their behalf and to get a better business environment for them. So we have a lot of conversation to the national government as well as the county government. We're so excited about this MOU that we're signing with KGBS today. We've previously actually signed an MOU with them before. And for us, it is key to see green development being more progressive in Kenya. And we hope that we can work with KGBS to make sure that these policies are actually pushed in place and put in place and uh, it will be also beneficial for our members. The other thing that will um, result from this MOU is the fact that both our organizations have members. So they'll profit from the trainings and the master classes that KGBS holds. They'll also profit from the trainings and the events that KPDO holds. And we're very excited about it. Today has been a very exciting day and um, we've had two MOU signed events. Uh, what we had was uh, KPDA signing and also WIRE. So KPDA is Kenya Property Developers Association. Um, we've signed uh, an MOU pr previously so with its expiry we realized we need to uh, carry on with the relationship we've with had, uh, collaboration, because the market, the construction industry, the market still needs this green resource knowledge. Uh, we've seen a lot of developers also um, come to our training and understand what it means to be green. Uh, we've been, you know, killing the myth that uh, going green is expensive or it costs more. Uh, you'll see a lot of developers now selling themselves as green developers. That's a huge, huge um, aspect towards greening our environment. 
The second thing about that relationship is that with the pull of the members between KGBS and KPDA, it means we can share and be efficient as associations. Uh, by sharing um, the training uh, events that KPDA have, they have discounts, the same way they have discounts with uh, KGBS. And no man is an island, we have to work together, and that's why there's SDG 17, which actually encourages us to work together. So the wire side of it is that uh, Women in Real Estate is a fantastic organization that we realize we really need to boost, uh, first of all, how we're engaging with women in real estate, uh, because they are there, they are recognized, they're leading, um, they're very successful in what they do. But at the same time, we feel that there is a great opportunity to green them as well. Green them through training, um, look at what they're doing with mentoring programs, because that will encourage uh, the opportunity of bringing girls into this industry. Because we're in the 21st century, but we still have less women in the construction industry. Yet the women who are in the construction industry are successful as well. Uh, the other side of it is as well as in supporting the government in what they need to do with w women empowerment. We are empowered already. So we tell the government, this is what we can do while working with women in real estate, as well as not forgetting the aspect of climate change that we're actually living through and what we can do about it by using uh, the Kenya Green Building Society resources. Elizabeth Wangeshi Shege, the president of Kenya Green Building Society, also received the award for winner of the National Diversity and Inclusion Environmental Conservation Champion 2019. The award honors individuals working to reduce environmental risks and undertake environmentally friendly activities while influencing others to embrace environmental conservation. Well, the award came about actually um, quite as a surprise. Um, and w once we um, put our paperwork in, um, the main thing was to say, look, they're looking at conservation. First of all, that's a fantastic thing to have on the list of awards because it encourages people. We've been very lucky to have uh, the late Professor Wangari Mathai um, and we follow uh, what she did. But we have to do more. We can't just say and sit back and say, oh, we're conserving the environment by planting trees, that's it. There's a lot more to do. And on that basis, uh, the Conservation Award, uh, we shared it on social media for people to vote and I was very lucky to win and I thank the voters a lot uh, for having come through on that. Over and above that, um, what I really feel excited about the award is that Green Buildings has now come to the table. For a long time, it was something that's forgotten. We don't consider the environment we spend 90% of our time in as the environment. We think it's just the outdoor environment we have to worry about. That has been a great awareness, advocacy effort with the Kenya Green Building Society to say, we need to look after our buildings. We need to build green. We need to look after the buildings post-construction and we need to adjust the policies around it. So by winning the award, I think more Kenyans can see and feel that business is not as usual. We have to change how we construct and transformation is the only way forward. The third edition of the Realtors Expo is here. Whether looking for that destination holiday getaway or investment options to diversify your portfolio, the Realtors Expo is a perfect opportunity to check out ideal options in the Mount Kenya region. Come and let's explore together. Our signature bus tour is here and it will be on the 18th of May, which is this coming Saturday. So we have selected a variety of investment options where you can put your money into. And the routes which we've selected these properties are uh, Waiyakiwe and Kiambu Road. So we have uh, apartments, 
both off plan and apartments which are ready for occupation. And uh, on board for this bus tour, we've also gathered our partners in the legal and financial sector. So if you have any questions in regards to law or finances, be it mortgages, we got you covered. See you there. Moving on, let's shift our focus to the home ownership segment with a tale of investing in this sector with prospects of getting attractive returns. Let's hear more. Because I've been in the property market for the last seven years, obviously I think it's every person's dream to buy themselves a home or uh, an apartment or something for investment if they have a home. I've been very lucky um, that I've had my own home where I live and of course now the next step was to put aside some money and see if I could get a good investment to buy and because I was already into the uh, system on a daily, weekly, weekly basis, I was seeing so many properties uh, coming up. Uh, I was exposed to so much. Um, coming from an interior background, I was very fussy to, to choose for anything for myself because I have this, call it a challenge, call it a, a weakness, but uh, for me, quality is everything. And uh, it just so happened that uh, the, my first time I came into Lamac, I got this beautiful positive energy. And I, every time, every corner I looked at, I could see that the developer had done some, this, made this building with so much passion, um, which I did not get from many buildings that I had sold. Uh, there were a few, but most of them uh, were okay nothing that i felt for sure that uh, i definitely wanted to buy for myself i saw the advantage of this building uh, being uh, in proximity to most of the multinational buildings uh, within westlands and it's in the heart of westlands and yet it's not in the congested part of westlands this is a different lifestyle this building is geared up more to the business executive to the frequent traveler, to the busy young couple working for these multinational companies. They don't really have much time. Uh, they want something really nice and chic. And yet they want, uh, they don't want to be part of the concrete jungles out there either. So I, it just, everything about this building just felt so right for me. The developer had put into place the amenities, uh, the quality of the, f the finishes that he had put in, uh, the uh, sort of, uh, I mean, if I can just point out a few, we have a glass skywalk on the 24th floor. Nobody in the whole country or how many in the continent uh, can, can uh, boast of such a feature. It's a different feeling altogether. Uh, there's a beautiful, um, infinity pool on the 24th floor. This is one of those first buildings I just saw and I was like, wow. And um, then it's just one thing led to the other. I managed to procure it. Uh, the developer was very understanding. I put together a payment plan to him and he actually um, agreed to take it from me, which was again, you know, just everything just flowed in. Well, I think maybe I was one of the lucky ones, but yes, I think it's like, in life, I always tell everybody, if you don't ask, you don't get. So um, I approached him, I sat down with him and I made, gave him my payment plan. And, uh, you know, it just came to a point where he said, yes, go ahead. The payment came through as promised to the developer. I've always had a very good lawyer. For some reason, I did not have any problems at all. I must say, as soon as my last payment went through, the key was handed over to me. I needed to do some extra works for myself and I was allowed to do that as well. So I, I would say that um, it was pretty good and I've talked to a couple of other people who have told me likewise, as long as their payments were, uh, were made in time, uh, the developers actually um, been quite flexible as well. 
Because I am already in the real estate uh, market, I had already started in exploring what are the best options for me to get the best returns. And I felt that, uh, I mean, I was so confident um, that the best rental returns today are the, if you can play around with the short lets and the long lets. So a couple of my friends and myself, what we did is that we let it out on short term because we wanted all the teething uh, problems of that particular building to also uh, for us to understand where the teething problems are, how to try to also improve on them. So we uh, managed to get some uh, amazing tenants on short lets uh, ranging between two weeks to almost two months. And uh, because of the decor, and the whole setup, everything is so modern and chic, like I said. Most of our tenants have been uh, extremely happy with their stay. We can now confidently say that we are ready to do the long lets. This particular building, in my opinion, is more for the person wanting to get the best out of his returns. Because for the price that you buy and the rental returns that you would get, especially if you furnished it, and furthermore, if you serviced it, you could actually um, use this like boutique hotels where uh, you have the flexibility of having your bedroom serviced, cleaned, laundry, towels uh, changed. And at the same time, the f flexibility of having a kitchen uh, helps as well because when the need arises, you can heat your food, you can get a takeaway, you can cook for yourself if you want. So lots of options that you have here. And uh, as far as rental um, returns are concerned, in my opinion, having studied the market uh, in the last, um, I would say, almost a year now, you know, because I've been uh, part of this, um, my, my journey's been almost a year from the time I bought to now. I think in this area of Westlands, I would say that we would be time to come because there's still some amenities that are being worked on and they won't be ready until almost the end of this year. But I would say time to come, this would be the most happening place to be in and would get you the best rental returns. shy away from investing in real estate. Engage professionals from the onset to make the right move and at First Avenue we'll be happy to guide you. Up next, other investment options available in the market, the property gallery. Lomac is a state-of-the-art 24-story building with a mix of residential, commercial and recreational spaces. The development is strategically located at the heart of Westlands, off Waiyaki Way, benefiting from Westlands amenities or being on the off-route, lending its excellent accessibility from Nairobi's growing infrastructure network. The first six floors are dedicated to commercial spaces, the seventh floor is the service area. The eighth to twentieth floors are residential apartments. Twenty-third is for conferencing facilities. And the twenty-fourth is for recreational activities including a gym, swimming pool, steam and sauna, a skywalk, restaurant and bar, as well as a terrace. The development consists of one, two and three bedroom residential apartments. The one and three bedrooms are sold out but available to let. The amenities in the two bedrooms include open plan spaces that are designed to optimize functionality while exuding a luxurious feel. Various sizes of two bedrooms, master ensuite, starting from a plinth area of 73 square meters to 107 square meters. Built-in wardrobes in the bedrooms for storage. A modern, open plan, fully fitted kitchen with a microwave, oven, dishwasher, washing machine and the hood. Kitchen opens to the dining area, spacious lounge with floor to ceiling windows, overseeing beautiful views of the city as well as the hills. Salient features include 
tight security from the 24-hour CCTV surveillance, guards, entry access card for tenants and visitors, centralized gas and hot water supply, fiber optic connectivity on all floors, seven high-speed lifts, ample parking space on three basements with a mechanical system. The building has access for the disabled. There are also commercial spaces available from 147 square meters and they benefit from the Lomac internal environment and recreational facilities and the tenants are at liberty to customize their interiors. The prices are on inquiry. Hindwood Estate consists of three bedroom, all ensuite bungalows, which are designed with the modern day utilities that perfectly fit your family's needs. This development is located just opposite the new Rain Hotel, a few kilometers from the Thika Superhighway along Kenyatta Road. Accommodation features include spacious lounge leading to the kitchen area, separate spacious dining area, American open plan kitchen fitted with cabinets for storage purposes, visitors cloakroom, ensuite bedrooms fitted with inbuilt closets that provide sufficient storage, large windows to allow in light, also giving a beautiful overview of the area and are fitted with grills for security purposes. Salient features include perimeter wall with electric fence which provides tight security in the area, 24-7 manned gate, live fences to separate the houses and also to add beauty in the estate, boreholes to ensure provision of water on each estate, entry porch in front of the house adding beauty to your home, spacious garage or parking, septic tank, water tanks for sufficient storage of water, cabra paved pathways, children play area. If you're looking to get onto the property ladder, just call us at First Avenue and we shall hold your hand every step of the way. That's it for today's edition on investment options available in the market. Thank you for your feedback and keep them coming. You can also send your questions or topics that you'd like us to highlight on this show. Until next week, as always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri!